Now I'm the first person to tell you normally that you need loads of different things to clean your bike. But actually there's something about me you might not know. I don't like maintaining my bike. I like to do the bare minimum. And I like to do this after I ride my bike, not before I ride my bike. So this is why this is important to do now while it's still wet. We're gonna get the bike clean, we're gonna get it protected and get it lubricated, which means next time all I need to do is check the tires are firm, have a basic safety check and head straight out on the bike. No time wasted. This is post-ride maintenance. Okay, so the key to this is doing it as quickly as possible. Um, getting warm, for starters, is what you want to be doing. I'm not too muddy on the top half, so I'm just going to put my puff jacket on, get myself nice and warm. And then, as you can see by my riding trousers, they're filthy, and the shoes are. We're going to clean them at the same time as cleaning a bike. Now, the key to this is time. You want to be doing this while the bike is still wet. And at a place like this, we're at Bike Park Wales, in case you wondered, they've got a jet wash service here, but it's got a very limited amount of time. So time is the essence. So do a bit of prep on your bike first. You go in, clean your bike, clean your trousers, clean your shoes, all in a one -er. Bit of lubrication, bit of protection, back in the car, go and get nice and warm. It's a real simple process, and there's a few things here I use to make that a bit easier. Now, depending where I normally ride, I do prefer to ride from my doorstep, go home where I've got all the facilities I need to get everything nice and clean. Working out the back of a car, somewhere like this, obviously I haven't got a jet wash on me today because I knew that they would have a jet wash service. So I've got some bike cleaner, I've got a brush, I've got some bike protect, the essential stuff, I've got some rags to clean stuff with. I've even got some rubber gloves if things get really nasty out there. And then I'll run you through some of the stuff I'm gonna be doing to make sure my stuff stays nice and clean and not too whiffy as well for the drive home. Okay, so it's quite literally a race against time at the moment. As you can see, the sun's out. It's actually drying this stuff on. So I'm gonna start getting some spray on and agitating this while some other people are actually in the process of cleaning their own bikes. I'm gonna work it in a bit. So the idea is that you get about a minute or two on those things. You want the mud and stuff to be falling off the bike. And that way, you get enough time to clean my kit while you're at it. It's all about saving a few pennies. Really work it all into everything. Get that bottle down as well, it's all part of the package. You might notice that I've kept my gloves on as well. They're already dirty, so this is only gonna help them. And they can actually use them to clean parts of the bike, like the hubs and stuff as well. Normally you'd have to use a few more brushes for that, but we haven't got time for that today. Okay, time's against us, so in we go. Start at the top of the bike. This stuff's always gonna drip down and you never know when your money's gonna run out. So these things are not normally too powerful. They're gonna be harmful for your bearings. So you don't have to worry about that. The aim is to get most of the bad stuff off. Like it's no substitute for a proper wash at home with a bucket and a brush and taking your time. But you wanna get this stuff off before it bakes onto your transmission and around your bearings and stuff. And of course, I wanna make sure I get my kit clean as well. It's just one less thing to do at home. Let's get some of this in here. And then a little bit down here. Just get those jockeys cleaned off. That's what I'm using my gloves for here. Same with the hubs, all good. Under the mud guards, under the fork crown. Quick bit under the BB shell there. We're gonna go over this with a rag in a minute before it runs out. Just take care of the shoes as well. Job done. Okay, so away from the jet wash now, back to the car. Wanna get this cleaned up a little bit better now. Bearing in mind that, think of this as like an interim clean, okay? It's not the same as doing a full clean at home. You're just doing what you can to make sure everything stays in as good condition as possible. Okay, first things first, basically what you want is some sort of water displacer. This stuff is ideal, but any sort of water displacer is good. Um, I'm gonna be spraying this at the bottom part of the chain here, just because if I'm aware of any misting that could go near the cassette. And of course, if it goes near the cassette, it's gonna go near the disc rotor. I'm also gonna spray a bit of this onto this rag and give the frame a bit of a wipe down and just give it a bit of a visual inspection that makes sure everything's where it should be. Okay, looking pretty good. Big, big old scratch on the crank there. That's obviously from a flying rock. I don't really mind that, to be honest. That's just occupational hazard for the cranks. Always good to have a look around the seals and your fork. Make sure your forks don't have any scratches or anything like that on them. Same on the non-drive side of the bike. Looking pretty good, to be fair. That's actually done quite a good job at wash okay now i'm not going to actually put any specific chain lube on the bike the reason for that is i like to do it each time i go riding so if i'm going to go riding it might be sunny and dry i'll obviously put a dry lube on put wet lube on if it's hammering down the rain for now just want to make sure it's protected 
from rust and corrosion. And that's what corrosion inhibitors do, so job done. Okay, it's looking good. I'm just gonna run Allen key around the bike, make sure that it's okay. Mountain bikes, you ride them in rough environments, things are gonna come loose, no matter how much thread lock and stuff you have on them. I've been riding a bike park today. There's a lot of chattery bumps, so it's a good opportunity for me to just make sure that all the shock hardware, pivot bolts, that sort of stuff, are nice and tight while we're at it. I'll be checking the rear derailleur because that's a candidate for rattling loose sometimes. It takes you five minutes. You don't want to find out when you're out on the trail that something's loose. In fact, the cameraman had someone come loose on his own personal bike recently. And if he'd have just done this before riding or after riding, it wouldn't have happened. Uh, I did notice my saddle was creaking on that ride. So there's a chance that uh, saddle rail belts. Oh, there we go. There's the candidate. That's going to need a bit more loving when I get home, but uh, worry about that one for another day. Other places you might want some sort of corrosion inhibitor are on the uh, sprung mechanisms on the inside of pedals. They do put up with a lot of flack to be fair, but uh, always worth just running a bit of stuff around just to drive out any moisture, keep them running smooth in between services, essentially. So post-ride maintenance isn't just about the bike. Uh, I did say I was going to check the brake pads. I'm going to do that in a minute. Firstly, I want to get out these wet clothes. Now I'm quite picky about how I do this. So I keep one of these sort of waterproof bags. You can get Ikea ones. There's a number of different ones you can get in the market or even just a big carry bag will do it, to be honest. You can get changed directly in them. I keep a pair of old sliders in the back of the car for exactly that. I can separate all my gear. I can keep my waterproof gear in one pile that's just gonna be hosed down at home and the rest can go straight in the washing machine. So I'm pretty much gonna strip off here in the car park, but it's a good way of doing it because it means there's less work to do when you get home. Now compared to what they were, that's pretty clean. In fact, that's about as clean as they're gonna get in winter, but they're soaking wet, which means they're gonna get damp and they're gonna stink. To get around that, I always keep some silk or gel beads inside a pair of socks. I've told you this a few times. Stuff them straight in now, and it starts drawing out that moisture. When I get home, stick them under a radiator, or if you're lucky enough, put them on a shoe dryer. Okay, pretty simple. Dirty riding kit in here, waterproof jacket at the bottom of that, separate. All that needs to do is hang up and drip dry. My shoes are in there, starting to um, defunk a little bit, I hope. Helmet in this thing, bag, ready to go straight in the house with me and the bike. Nice and simple. All this stuff lives in the back. I'm also got a few more tricks up my sleeve. Now, if you've got a long drive home, you might want to consider some sort of baby wipes to give yourself a bit of a shower. You could even do the old shower in a can, or if you're really grubby, you can go the whole hog and do an actual dry shower. Uh, whatever takes your fancy. It depends how many people you've got to drive home with. Don't normally have to take my rear wheel off to be fair to drive home, but I do want to check my brake pads because I don't want to have to do that before the next ride. So I'm just going to flip my bike upside down. You should always be careful of this because of the fact that you can scratch the controls. I know it's okay on this particular bike because of the rise of my bars. I will be taking the front wheel off, which is obviously going to expose some other sins as well. All the areas you missed when cleaning your bike. You may look clean when it's upright, but now you're going to see that it's actually not really that clean. But this is the stage. If you want to, you can get your rag. You can also just make sure the worst of that stuff is okay. To be honest, I'm going to be going out on another muddy ride fairly soon, so there's no point in me going any further with this. Those pads, there's plenty left on those. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to check the back ones as well, just to be sure. And the last little thing is um, basically to stop your pads getting pushed or getting the pistons pushed out is I keep one of these little fellas inside my pocket. I'm going to take the bike out of the car, force that in between your two brake pads there. And what that essentially means is if the brake lever gets accidentally actuated in the back of the car when I clumsily load it or something like that, um, you're not going to need to sort of prise the pads out before you ride again. It's basically minimising everything you have to do before you ride by doing a few jobs after you ride. Well, that's about all there is to it. Post-ride maintenance, really, it's more about getting back out on the trails as fast as you can. Something I like to get done after I ridden my bike. Keep a little place for everything. Makes life a little easier. Tuck this away in the back of the car. Head on home, and it means there's nothing left to do when I get home, except put the bike safely in the workshop, lock it up, and that's it. Well, hopefully this video has given you a few tips. Um, thanks for hanging around. Don't forget to subscribe and all that stuff. I'll tell you what, Jack, that's exactly not what I'm gonna do when I get home. I'm gonna get surgical on this thing. This is gonna be so clean, you could eat your dinner off that chain set. That's not the point, is it? <laughs>